Welcome back to another episode of the Gruesome Garage. We're over here getting some more grounds done. About to do some ground pounding. So this is the way we make our cables. It's a little uh, smasher, crimper. You know, you buy the copper ends or whatever material you, you really want. And this is a pounder. So what it does is locks the end, locks the copper end in there. And then you hammer that down and it crimps it onto the uh, onto the wire. Works really well. Beat the living crap out of it, and that wire never coming out. You can solder them if you want, but uh, you really got to heat it up, and it kills the heat shield on the wires. So this is the way we do it. Last time we left off, the only thing I really had on this side was the ground wire. So ran the alternator feed wire, and I plugged it in to the two source wires that come off of an alternator, or at least a Chrysler alternator, and Megasquirt has a way to wire it through the computer because on, you know, regular Jeeps and stuff, it's regulated through the computer. Uh, someone gave me a little secret, Anthony again, that you don't need to use the computer to regulate it. We're actually using an external regulator off of probably a Cummins, a bunch of other older Dodge stuff. And uh, I'll put the link in the description for that, and it's funny, we, we put that in and then we were looking at this motor over here and we noticed got almost the same thing just hanging out here so must be it must be an inline six thing yeah the only difference is we got one that actually if you look over here on the other side Let's see if we can get back there has a little dial on it so you can change the output you know obviously you can't you don't want to overwork the alternator but you can just make sure that you got the exact settings that you need. So to wire it, it's super simple. One of the field wires off of the alternator goes directly to one of these guys right here. The first one, the first pinout. The second pinout is switch 12 volt ignition off of a fuse. We use the painless and I just label it alternator. And that also ties into the second field wire off of the alternator. So it's super simple and Easy as hell, and apparently it's dead nuts reliable, so you don't have to, you know, try to screw around with the computer because the uh, Mega Squirt directions say to use like, solder some diodes in between and everything. It just doesn't seem like a fun time. So this is easier, smarter, and hopefully we can get this if we need it ever. But it should be, uh, like I said, dead nuts reliable. So we're doing a little more test fitting here. Pop the hole in our fender. I will eventually replace these fenders. I'm not too happy. Been uh, kissed the tire a couple times, as you can see, obviously. But that's no big deal. They'll get cut higher up here. Don't have to cut this more, really, because I pushed the axle forward. But I'll cut it here. Probably follow this line eventually. Something like that, straightforward, maybe a little angle down. I'm going to tuck this in a bit at some point. I don't know if I'll do it right now or when I pull the motor out to do tube front end and roll cage and everything. But we wanted to test fit this in. So now we know where the fender is. So we're gonna cut this back and we're gonna put a nice teardrop on here. Clean it up a little bit. I was gonna pipe my wastegate out here, but I might actually still poke it out here. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, try to poke it out right here. And just hide and then it. Maybe, maybe I'll just probably just do a dump, a 90 on it. Yeah, or we could cut this out a little for it. We put this back in and test fit it. We're gonna pipe our wastegate, and then we gotta make a mount off of this up pipe, mounting it on the engine somewhere because this thing moves around a lot. We don't want these clamps or anything coming loose. We don't want anything cracking. And it's really not a long pipe, so there's no need for flex or anything. Mounted solid to the motor, it moves with the motor. That's really all you have to worry about. So O2 sensor right here. Just another piece of the puzzle gives us a little more motivation. As my brother was playing a little Fender games here, I did a little more ground pounding and finished up this ground I was talking about. So put a little insulation on it, but that ground is going from the engine itself. It's coming through here and it's gonna go straight back to the battery. And then I'm gonna have one off the battery to the frame again. You know, I just want to make sure that this thing is properly grounded. You know, some Cherokees have ground issues. 
We'll make sure this one will never have a ground issue. Making a mess over here. Amongst all this carnage, there must be something good. Let's follow Matt to see what the hell is going on. So, decided that I'm sick of looking at this. Ever since I put the turbo in this Jeep, we, uh, we stripped the interior really because the floor was absolutely gone. As you can see, it's all patches. So we stripped the interior, patched up everything. As we were patching it, we did the original first gen turbo build. And uh, at that point, I, I was like, why put the interior in? I need some axles, you know? So got the Dana 60s, put that in, wheeled it for a year or two like that, beat the snot out of it, kinked her up pretty good. But uh, now, now that we're doing all this other stuff, I wanna make it a little nice in here. I know it's not uh, Ultra 4 race car or whatever, but it's scrap metal, it's free, and uh, it works. It's stainless. Yeah, fancy, fancy. So now we can uh, pretty much eat off it. This is restaurant grade here. So. so what we did was we took another one of these boxes and my brother got two or three of them. So if we screw this one up, we got another spare. And we basically just cut a triangle out of it then we squared it, made a right angle here, so that when it butts up against the <coughs> dash in there, it'll sit nice and square. If I can get good enough at TIG welding, which I'm an amateur right now, hopefully I can weld this to the piece of metal in there. We'll see, but that's the plan. So this is gonna go on here, as you saw. It's gonna butt up against this. Cut this off a little more. We're gonna put a nice shift boot in. I'm gonna keep cutting and fitting and try to get it to fit much nicer over the trans tunnel. It's gotta be, you know, of course, X-rays have to have the most ridiculous shape, not a uniform shape. So who knows, maybe we'll cut that out too. But for now, I'm just trying to clean it up and there's nothing bougier than some stainless steel. Boy. see this jeep has obviously had a lot of rust we did most of the floors like we talked about before but my brother wants to clean this up in the back because it's honestly pretty disgusting so let him share what kind of ideas he has for the back so this is all pretty shot all here where the seam sealer was really this is okay a little gone down here but no big deal so my plan is to make a piece that goes straight across and then comes down because this is all still solid here. So just gotta flatten this out. I don't plan on putting the back seat in anymore. So also we're gonna probably put the battery over here somewhere, yeah, fuel, fuel cell, cell back there. So just trying to neaten it up. In the winter time, you know the snow was flying. You know dirt flies up through these holes. So. We're trying to make this a little more streetable. This darn seam sealer. Look at this. You think your Cherokee's made out of solid material? Nope. Just some caulk, you know? A little bit of rubber holding her together. Basically, they, I think they take rust and they mix it with silicone, just splooge it in there. Look at this. Looks like the Bondo boys are here. More like the seam sealer boys. The Cherokee, the guys from, the guys at the Cherokee factory must have been roofers or something. Look at this. Look at this joke. Filling it all up with tar. Smelt it.
We'll let you know. It's starting to smolder. Smolder, schmeister. Schmeister, schmolder. Oh, yeah, baby. Here we go, boys. Weight reduction. This is not going to come out nicely. So, we were done dirty on the fuel cell, and the one I wanted was back ordered till March. So, figured it might be idea to get a better one. Anyways, so what what we ended up ordering was a Aeromotive 340 Stealth fuel cell with a pump, 340 liter per hour, tw uh, 20 gallon tank, and uh, ordered all the fittings and everything. So. I'll be getting that in the next couple of days. So for right now we decided we're gonna make a dash. So what I did was made some pieces of cardboard, you know, figured it all out, cut them up, welded it together, a couple of mounts onto this piece, and then used a few of the factory mounts. So on this we will have our water temp, our oil pressure, maybe voltage and uh, voltage and fuel gauge fuel level um, I'll put them over here over here I'm not sure yet I might put my switches up here or I'll put them on the trans tunnel right here I haven't decided yet but we got this in now we can put our gauges in and we can wire up our gauges as Matt's nibbling around with sheet metal I started running a little wire so with the gauges most of them are electronic some of them, like the boost and the oil pressure, will be a hard line uh, mechanical gauge, but all of the other gauges, the voltmeter, the fuel, and the temp sensor will be electronically powered. So, to show you guys, I just ran, this is switched ignition power to one of the painless harness fuses. This is gonna be ground, there's three of them. And then the yellow is our fuel level that's gonna run back to the fuel cell. And the purple is our temp signal and that's gonna to go to the temperature sensor. All the way up here, I found a little nifty spot for it. Underneath, if you guys can see, I found a little plug we discovered that by accident when we got our head done, Put the, when we got the LS valve springs to get fit in there, the guy forgot to put the plug back in, this guy right here. And when we started it, all the water came out. So let's see what Matt's doing over here. So we got our template made for the back, for our little hand, our little back seat cover. And, uh, now Rear gonna, seat delete. We're gonna hack it out of some uh, 18 gauge. So let's nibble. Now that we have our little dash made, we've uh, marked out where we're gonna put our gauges. This is uh, gonna be water temp or oil pressure for this one, not sure yet. And then voltage fuel level. We have our boost on the uh, A pillar here. And we have our O2 wide band right there. And uh, what's Jeff doing? Making some spaghetti, some Sunday spaghetti guys. So. We pulled the dash apart. I'm trying to get it ready for the gauges. I want to put everything together and make it look pretty by the end of the day. So let's get to it.
seem to be working so far. They work great on our trailer. So, as you can see, the spaghetti process has moved from over there to over here. We got simple stuff. Red's constant power for the tack. Blue is going to be my switch power. All the browns ground. And then I got a fuel signal and the temp signal. And then I'm going to run the plastic line for the boost and the oil pressure. And the gauges will be ready. Basically just going to put a bunch of those little clip connectors on. All the gauges look like they want to, they all have slots for them. So I'm readying it up. Matt's cutting out the gauge cluster area and it'll just be a plug and play from then on. So let's take a look at this. We popped our holes in here and it's hard to find a hole saw that's two and a sixteenth and two and five eighths. So we used a two inch hole saw and uh, cleaned it up a little bit with a nice carbide bit. One of these guys, you can put it in the die grinder, drill, whatever, run it around and then uh, get your gauges to fit nice and uh, nice and snug. So we just gotta clean up these two and then we'll uh, be ready to put these gauges in, wire them up. We got our gauges mounted. Now it's time to wire them up. Thankfully they all have these little spade, whatever you wanna call them, connectors on the end, little tabs. So it makes fitting them up pretty easy. If you look, I got my spaghetti down to a minimum. So, pretty simple. You look, oh, voltmeter. You look, here's the ground. Here's the positive switch power. Oh, fuel. Fuel's down there. We got our fuel signal, which goes to the S. Got the ground, which goes to the ground. And you got the switch power, goes to switch power. That's simple, guys. We also got the temp sensor, same thing, signal wire, switch power, ground. Super simple wham bam deal. And then, there we go guys. Now let's get the tack involved. It's a wonderful day to get a little motivation. Now that we've got these gauges in, we got our dash a little more assembled. You know, it's a lot more motivation to get it done. Jeff pulled the battery cables here, pulled them through. So my battery's gonna go somewhere around here. We're going to cover this whole area as you saw. I will probably not film that because it's pretty boring, but I'll show you the end result. And uh, the next step is get our fuel system in back here. Gonna put an aeromotive cell there. I'm getting that tomorrow. We have all our fittings. We have the battery box to do, obviously. We still have the disconnect switch, which we're gonna probably mount up here in this center console area. And then the big thing is connect up the mega squirt to a computer and make sure we got everything correct. So tune in next time, guys.